Hello everyone, it's a beautiful, quite warm day here in March. We've been having some really cold nights lately, so I have to cover up all my plants that are eager to get into bud and eager for spring, easily as eager as I am. And um, right now we're looking at my blueberries. As you can see, they've got lots of beautiful fat flower buds, and that means it's time for me to refreshen the soil and get them all ready for, give them more energy really, because mine live in pots. And so they only get the nutrition I give them. So I'm going to be just refreshing that soil down there. I like to keep mine mulched with pine cones. I think they're so pretty, pine cones. And um, they just really offer a bit more protection for the roots. The roots are really shallow on blueberries. Um, and also during the summer when it's really hot, it helps them from getting too dried out. And you get so many different kinds of interesting pine cones, all different shapes and sizes, gorgeous things. Um, what I'm going to do is just remove all these pine cones. I started doing that just now and get down to the compost and I'll just show you in a second. So having removed all of the pine cones, you can see just how the roots are really quite exposed over here. So I'm just going to get, it, get in there and dig up the top two inches of soil. So I've got all of the top layer of soil here. It's all dug up there, just sort of scraped it up. Um, and I'm just, you can see that all the roots are quite exposed now, so I'm going to work quite quickly and just cover them up again with some nice new fresh ericaceous soil I bought. And then we'll get them all packed up with their pine cones again. And that should just give them a really good boost. And one more thing I'm going to do is after I've done that, I'm going to give them a good root soak with this. That's just really going to help them. I did that last year too, and again, it really worked well. So. You just mix it up with some water and it just gives them a real good boost right when they're in the middle of trying to start flowering. So I get on with doing that. So there we go, the top layer is full of wonderful, rich compost. And I'll just go about replacing all the beautiful pine cones. They're so gorgeous little things. I've got lots of other ones I need to work on too. Oh, that's a little lingonberry. See, it's just constantly in flower, but I can leave that one for now. And then I've got these pink blueberries. They are actually really already shooting out their leaves. I actually cover them at night because we've got these really cold freezing temperatures at the moment. These ones are really quite young. I only got them last year and you can see the leaf buds here. There's lots of leaf buds, foliage buds here. They're the sort of sharp pointed ones. And then the round ones, which there aren't many of, there's one over here, that is a fruit one. So we're not going to have many pink blueberries, but this is the second year I've had them, so I'm not expecting too much. Next year we should have more, and they'll just continue growing. I'll probably have to repot these, but I will refreshen them now, just as I'm doing the others. And here's some more, these ones, of course, the older high bush blueberries again, and they are just so full of buds really lovely full of flower buds i should say down here we have a new one we also got it's a little blueberry one i got from so it's blueberries <laughs> not pink blueberries i got this from a supermarket and it looks to have lots of foliage again it does take a few years to really start fruiting properly but it's looking good too and while we're on the subject of blueberries, these are some cuttings I took back in 2021. And they're doing really well. They've been in this pot the whole time. They seem a bit slow to root, but they're starting to put out some buds. If you look here, there are quite a few foliage buds there. And then there's a little, a little flower one right at the end. And this one too also has a, a flower one. So I'm actually planning on repotting this one into a nice big pot this year. I have refreshed the compost now, so it's fine for now. And it's really happy in the greenhouse. It has a nice warm spot during the day at least. Temperatures do drop quite a bit during the evening or during the night. It can go down to like one degree Celsius because so, it's not heated. But it just gives, protects them from the worst of the weather. And um, yeah, they're doing really well. There's even a new little branch coming out from that cutting, so that's good. And just in case you're wondering what this beautiful evergreen over here is, it is a pineapple guava. 
I've had to cover it because it lost a lot of foliage during one of our deep freezes, so it gets covered up at night with a blanket. And it's just next to a bay tree as well. So here we are, blueberries are all done. They've all been refreshed. Lots of lovely new nutrient rich compost. And the pine cones all replaced. Oh, and this is actually the little um, lasagna planting we did a few months ago. All the little beautiful white crocuses are starting to peek out now. So I'm going to give them all a really good root drench now. With this special ericaceous feed. There we go. While we're out here looking at blueberries, I want to show you some other berries that are blue that are growing out here. These are honey berries. They're often compared to blueberries because they are blue, but they have a more of a, a tart flavor than blueberries. Some people say they taste a bit like raspberries mixed with blackberries because they're quite tart. But yeah, I just think they have their own flavor. They're really, really wonderful. These ones are called blue banana. They're quite large, quite juicy, quite sweet actually. So I'm hoping to get, well, I'm gonna get this little bunch here for sure this year. They're really, really, really hardy, so they don't mind temperatures dropping. I haven't had to cover them up at all, which is a blessing because I'm going around covering up all kinds of things at night now, nowadays. Now that temperatures are dropping down to minus three and minus four overnight again, even though we are in March. So yeah, these are really, really wonderful ones. And I'll keep you updated on how they turn out. But I have seen photos of them covered in snow while in bloom and they just, you know, are so not bothered by that. So it's a really wonderful thing. And they're all starting to bloom now. They're meant to be fruiting sort of around June or July. So they're some of the earliest berries you get which is very exciting. I'll just show you some of the other ones too. I've got five different cultivars. They really do need cross-pollination. They need pollination partners to cross-pollinate. So um, I have them growing sort of around each other, sort of nearby each other so they can all cross-pollinate. And they're supposed to be quite easy to cultiva cultivate too, like to propagate. So I'm thinking about getting some little cuttings from them later on this year and getting some more and then just being able to mix them up more, keep them really close to each other and just get lots of these really lovely berries. They're so much easier to grow than, than blueberries in that they don't really need a lot of, of looking after at all and they can grow in any kind of soil because as with blueberries you need to have that really ericaceous acid soil. These guys have no specific soil requirements. So super easy. I have given them all a bit of fish blood and bone earlier this, this year, I would say like a week ago now, when they started springing out just to give them that extra boost for all their new growth. And I'm going to give them a bit of this now here, Epsom salts. It's just another really useful bit of food. It just helps them get really healthy growth and really strong growth too. So I thought I'd give them all a bit of that now. So all I'm gonna do is just pull back some of the mulch I've got here. They do like mulch. <laughs> and then just sprinkle some of this stuff down. Add some salt, and then just dig it in, or just sort of like that. And then I'll give them some water too. It's been so dry lately, I think they could do a little bit of a drink. And it's always good to water the stuff in. So I'll be doing that, and also whenever I find some little weeds, I've got creeping buttercup here, which is very pretty, but it does really take over. And these guys don't like so much competition. I've got some hellebores over here that, look at them, they're beautiful. They haven't been, um, how gorgeous they are, beautiful hellebores, but they have not been pruned. Usually I prune off all this dead, well, old growth here, old foliage. So I might just get around doing that too today. But yeah, so pretty, these little guys. I love the little freckly faces. Look at that, gorgeous things. This one is in my sunniest position, and you can just see how much it's budding up. It just loves sunshine. Really healthy growth going coming here. It's wonderful.
And finally, here are the Saskatoons, these wonderful blueberries that are larger than regular blueberries and just taste so amazing. They're also known as June berries because they are ripe in June usually. So they're going to start flowering in about April and then by June they'll be ripe. They just take about six weeks to go from flower to fruit. So really quick turnaround. I really think these guys look just like my Asian pear tree when it first came. The buds here look so similar and they are really completely related. Um, these guys are all in the rose family, just like pears and apples. So this cultivar in particular is a really large one. So it's my tallest one and it's called Smoky. It's cultivated in Canada commercially. So it's got really good, delicious berries. And then over little guy is called Sleet, and it's actually one that was recommended you could grow really well in containers because you can keep it small. But I wanted to have them all together so they could all cross-pollinate. This guy doesn't actually need a pollination partner, but one of the others does. So it makes sense to keep them all together. And I will take cuttings from this guy eventually, in the autumn probably, and then maybe grow some other ones in containers and we'll just see what, what goes best. And finally we have this little guy. He's actually a dwarf cultivar and he is called Prince William. So he's got lots of lovely little buds coming on too. But they're just such really fun things to grow. They were so delicious. And again, like honeyberries, they don't have any specific soil requirements. So they're really easy to grow anywhere. They love sunshine, so it's best to have them in a sunny spot. But they're also super hardy. So even if we get like really cold temperatures, I can just leave them. Even if they're in complete flower and it snows and the temperatures drop, it won't bother them. So that's a really huge benefit. I think I just want to grow as many as possible that are just this hardy because that makes it so much easier now in changing temperatures. We just don't know what kind of weather we're going to have. So really, really handy to have some that don't really mind. But I hope you enjoyed having a look at the three different kinds of blueberries I'm growing out here, as well as the pink blueberries themselves. Um, I'm going to be giving these guys all a little bit of Epsom salts as well around now, I think, because they are budding up beautifully. So it's time to feed them a little bit. I'll also give them some fish blood and bone get them sort of really good balanced nutrition there and a slow release fertilizer.